we're going to deal with two switch features, Smart Link and Monitor Link. Through this course, we are supposed to understand the basic principles and usage scenarios of Smart Link and Monitor Link and their typical configuration. Let's start with the basic concepts and terms of Smart Link. If a switch on the network is connected to an aggregation device, such unreliable network connection is prone to single points of failure and network interruptions. Therefore, in actual network deployment, we use the redundancy topology, as shown in this figure. However, redundancy topology may cause loops. The most common way to address the loop issue while at the same time ensuring network redundancy is to use SPT. SPT has two characteristics. Firstly, it requires all switches on the network to be deployed with SPT. Secondly, the data exchanges between SPT-enabled switches depend on BPDU flooding. When SPT is used, the convergence can take seconds, which cannot meet the requirements of some sensitive services. In response, the Smart Link feature is designed for Huawei switches. Smart Link is dedicated to dual uplink networks, which features the convergence speed of milliseconds and easy configuration. To address the loop issue, we need to deploy Smart Link only on two switches shown in this figure. SmartLink has three advantages. First of all, after SmartLink is deployed on a dual uplink network, one link is blocked, avoiding loops. Secondly, SmartLink provides fast convergence. Once a link becomes faulty, service traffic is rapidly switched to the other link, ensuring normal data forwarding. Thirdly, the configuration is simple and user-friendly. Then, let's move on to terms of smart link. The first term is smart link group. A smart link group has two member ports, a master port and a slave port. In most cases, the master port is active and the slave port is blocked and inactive. When the link where the master port resides becomes faulty, Service traffic can be rapidly switched to the slave port. The blocked slave port enters the forwarding state, and the master port enters the blocked state. The master port and slave port in a smart link group are manually specified and do not change during operation. Only the states of the master port and the slave ports are changed. When both the master port and the slave port are up, the master port enters the forwarding state prior to the slave port entering the blocked state. The link where the master port resides is the master link, and the link where the slave port resides is the standby link. Then, we'll talk about send control VLAN and receive control VLAN. When smart link is configured on the switch, the send control VLAN needs to be specified. As shown in this figure, if the function to send flush packets is enabled on switch C and switch D, and the master link between switch C and switch A is faulty, the new master link between switch C and switch B sends flush packets over the send control VLAN. Flush packets are sent to notify upstream switches of updating entries, such as MAC entries, to allow upstream switches to receive and process flush packets, the receive control VLAN needs to be configured. Assume that the send control VLAN is VLAN 200, then the receive control VLAN is also VLAN 200. When master slave switching is performed, the MAC and ARP entries of upstream switches cannot be used in the new network topology. Flush packets can be sent to notify the upstream switches of updating MAC and ARP entries. We'll move on to the working mechanism of Smart Link. As shown in this figure, there are four switches, switch A, switch B, switch C, and switch D. 
Switch A is in the dual uplink topology structure, which can be deployed with SmartLink. We can deploy SmartLink on Switch A and configure GE one slash zero slash one as the master port, and GE one slash zero slash two as the slave port. The network runs properly after the deployment. The master port of Switch A enters the active state. And the slave port enters the standby state. Data is then transmitted over the link from switch A to switch B to switch C. In case of a network fault, SmartLink rapidly detects the fault and switches the slave port to the active state within milliseconds. The master then enters the standby state. Data is then transmitted over the link from switch A to switch C to switch D. In this case, the MAC and ARP entries of switch C and switch D are still those of the original network topology. Therefore, a mechanism of updating MAC and ARP entries is required to prevent traffic loss in case of traffic switching. To address the problem, SmartLink has two mechanisms. One is that the smart link device sends flush packets over the new link. The other is that upstream traffic is transmitted to update MAC and ARP entries. In terms of the mechanism that the smart link device sends flush packets over the new link, upstream switches, that is switch C and switch D in this figure, must support smart link and identify flush packets. Switch A sends flush packets over the new link. The protection VLAN ID of the smart link group, where GE one slash zero slash one resides, is filled in to the VLAN field of flush packets, and the send control VLAN ID of the smart link group is filled in to the control VLAN ID field of flush packets. Upon receipt of flush packets. Upstream switches instantly update their MAC and ARP entries. The switching speed is high. Upstream switches extract the VLAN bitmap data from flush packets and delete the MAC and ARP entries learned in these VLANs. To ensure that flush packets can be properly sent over the send control VLAN. Configure all interfaces on the dual uplink network to allow access to the send control VLAN. Otherwise, flush packets fail to be sent or forwarded. It is recommended that users send flush packets with a tag reserved when the function to receive flush packets is configured. The receiving of flush packets triggers MAC entry clearance and ARP entry aging and learning. Using a large number of device resources to prevent network flapping, do not deploy the function to receive flush packets on large-scale smart link networks. The mechanism that entries are updated through automatically transmitted traffic is suitable for the scenario where upstream devices do not support smart link. This figure explains why such a mechanism is designed. Switch C and Switch D cannot get aware of a link fault between Switch A and Switch B, and therefore do not update their own MAC entries. Assume that Switch A is connected to a PC, and the data traffic sent by the PC is forwarded from Switch A to Switch C. Switch C updates its MAC address table upon receipt of data traffic, in the same manner. Switch D updates its own MAC address table. The efficiency of this mode is low compared with the way of sending flush packets. If flush packets are sent to update entries, all the upstream devices need to support SmartLink and be configured with the Receive Control VLAN. The third module of the SmartLink working mechanism is the Link Restoration Mechanism. When the master port and master link become faulty, the slave port is switched to the active state, and the master port is switched to the standby state. When the master link and master port need to be restored, the smart link group supports two modes: preemption and non-preemption. 
in preemption mode, when the master link fault is rectified, the master port switches to the preemption state, and the slave port switches to the standby state. In non-preemption mode, after the master link fault is rectified, the slave port is still in forwarding state, and the master port is in standby state to maintain traffic stability. SmartLink achieves multi-instance traffic load balancing. By default, all data traffic is forwarded through the master port of switch A, causing idle links between switch A and switch C. This leads to a waste of resources. In response, configure to allow data traffic in VLAN 11 through VLAN 20 to be forwarded through the slave port and the rest of data traffic to be forwarded through the master port achieving traffic load balancing. Now, let's look at the basic configuration of SmartLink. We'll start with a simple configuration. The basic requirements of the lab test are shown here. Before key configuration is performed, create a VLAN on each switch and configure the switch interface type as trunk. Let's take a look at the key configurations. Firstly, Disable STP on the two interfaces of switch 3. Then, define the interface types as trunk and allow access to the associated VLANs. First up, create SmartLink Group 1 and configure the master and slave ports on switch 3 in SmartLink mode. Then, configure the send control VLAN to allow the sending of flush packets over the new link in case of a master slave switchover. Configuring the password is optional. The configuration on switch 1 and switch 2 is similar. Then, view and verify configuration on switch 3. In the system view of switch 3, run the display smart link group 1 command to check that the configuration has already taken effect. The last two rows show that GE1 slash 0 slash 1 of switch 3 is configured as the master port and is in forwarding state. And GE1 slash 0 slash 2 of switch 3 is configured as the slave port and works in standby state. When the master link becomes faulty, the master port changes from the active state to the inactive state. The slave port changes from the inactive state to the active state and sends a flush packet. Then, we'll learn the basic concepts and technical implementation of MonitorLink. After SmartLink is deployed on switch A and the master link directly connected to switch A is faulty, switchback is performed on both the master and standby links. When the link between switch B and switch D becomes faulty, switch A does not get aware of the link fault. The master port of switch A still works in active state and forwards packets. This does not trigger switching between the master and backup links, and therefore leads to packet loss between switch B and switch D. Monitor link is introduced to address the problem. MonitorLink is a supplement to SmartLink. It is used to monitor uplinks so that downlinks can be synchronized with upstream links. Simply put, when MonitorLink is deployed on switch B, the uplink port and downlink port of switch B need to be specified. The downlink port is in up state when the uplink port is up, and the downlink port is in down state when the uplink port is down. In this manner, switch A can get aware of link faults between switch B and switch D. A monitor link group consists of one or more uplink and downlink ports. The status of downlink ports is changed along with upstream ports. An uplink port is the monitoring object of a monitor link group. If multiple ports are configured as uplink ports of the monitor link group, the monitor link group is in up state so long as any of these ports is in the forwarding state. The monitor link group is down only when all uplink ports become faulty. When the faulty uplink port of a monitor link group is restored, 
only the downlink port that is blocked due to the uplink port fault is enabled. After SmartLink is deployed on switch A and MonitorLink is deployed on switch B, to allow switch A to get aware of the link status between switch B and switch D, configure GE1-0-1 on switch B as an uplink port and a GE 1 slash 0 slash 2 as a downlink port. The monitor link configuration on switch B is simple. Configure a monitor group on switch B and then configure GE 1 slash 0 slash 1 on switch B as an uplink port and a GE 1 slash 0 slash 2 as a downlink port. Let's move on to typical networking. First of all, SmartLink and MonitorLink network configuration. Deploy a SmartLink group on switch A. To allow switch A to get aware of link faults between switch D and switch B or between switch D and switch C, deploy a MonitorLink group on switch B. The MonitorLink group disables uplink ports when it gets aware of an uplink fault triggering link switching of the smart link group. This allows switch A to get aware of link changes between switch D and switch B or between switch D and switch C in time. Let's take a look at the configuration on switch A. Create a smart link group and configure two interfaces as the master and slave ports. Then configure the send control VLAN and set the password to 123. Activate link switchback and set the switchback time to 30 seconds. Then enable the smart link group. Then configure a monitor link group on switch B. Configure GE1 slash 0 slash 1 and GE1 slash 0 slash 2 as the uplink port and downlink port, respectively. Then, configure the receive control VLAN in response to the send control VLAN of the smart link group. Perform the same configuration on switch C and switch B. The configuration on switch D is simple. Switch D does not need to be configured with smart link or monitor link. Only the receive control VLAN needs to be configured on the two access interfaces. That's all for today. Thanks for listening.